Bless you. Nate, are you sick? No, I'm okay. Are you, are you okay? It's okay. <clears throat> just like a little cold or something. Okay, Cookie, let's get the names, okay? All right, we're doing the solo thing. I need a name here. Thanks, Jones. I can dig that. 30 seconds. Nicole? If you want to buzz in, hit the letter B. B is in bubble wrap. You God, got I love it. that How bubble wrap. How you doing? Rap. Check one. Blah, blah, blah. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, oh, 5K blue. Cripes, can I, can I get somebody here on the double, please? Thank you. 20 seconds. Hey, we got 20. All right. Question comes on the screen. You think you know the answer. You buzz in. You pick one of the choices on the screen. You got that? 10 seconds. Okay, everybody. I need quiet. 86 the desktop, please. Okay, and go to black, please. Post standby. Okay, ready. Come on, go. Okay, here we go. And dial 1-900-TARTY. We've got one player behind the keyboard. Hey, what's the matter? Where are all your friends? Didn't you read the box? This is a party game. All right, whatever. It's you and me. We'll party together. Let's do it. Okay, pick a category. Hey, what the hell are you trying to figure out? Get ready for some fun. It's question number one. The category behind this question is Memoirs of a Dead President. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Okay, it's a little morbid, but try and picture this scenario. You're interviewing Abraham Lincoln. You ask him, Abe, what were the last words you heard before you were shot? If memory serves him correctly, what will he tell you? Can we leave it in our mission? The devil can cite scripture for his purpose. Kenneth, what's the frequency? Or you socked out. No, when he was shot, Lincoln wasn't watching The Merchant of Venice. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. <laughs> you sock dialogizing old man trap. These words were delivered by an actor in the play Lincoln was watching at Ford's Theater. The following laughter drowned out the gunshots. <laughs> All right, come on, hit me. We need a cat. Look to do. It's question number two. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Mr. Scott meets Pops Racer. This question's going to be worth $2,001 bills. Imagine the chief engineer of the Star Trek's Enterprise and Speed Racer's dad team up to design a new Mach 5 race car. If it's capable of a top speed of warp factor 1, how fast can Speed Racer's new car go? 10 times the speed of light, the speed of sound, the speed 10 times the speed of light. No, but that's how fast your score's going to drop. Here's what you should have guessed. The speed of light. I hope that car comes equipped with driver's side barf bags. How about it? Hit me with the category. Ooh it's question number three. The category. Education, fat cats, and the weather. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Which of these percentages is highest? American cats who are overweight, 1990 tax dollars spent on education, groundhog accuracy over the past 60 years, or part of America that is Alaska? No, 16% of America is Alaska. Too bad you didn't pick this. They have been 28% accurate. Yeah, several groundhogs have been hired as weathermen, but they hate wearing ties and keep eating their pointer. All right, come you're my question for forevermore. I love you. My question for. This one's gonna be your ABCs and TNA. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Okay, for this next question, I want you to imagine this. One of the Baywatch babes goes shopping on Rodeo Drive looking for a diphthong. A clerk explains to her that a diphthong is not a swimsuit for stupid people. It's German for work boots, the tongue depressor at the doctor's office, a phrase made from two opposite words, or a type of vowel sound. Open wide and say no. And let's see the correct answer. Specifically, it's a vowel sound that changes to another vowel sound within one syllable. As in, boy, it must have taken a lot of toil to be that good an actress.
The category is ragtime, and this one's going to be worth $3,000. Let's just say this question has uh, nothing to do with Scott Joplin. Which of the following is not a 19th century euphemism for menstruation? To have my friend with me, to have my cousin with me, to have my grandmother with me, or to have my aunt with me? You're bloody wrong. <laughs> to have my cousin with me. The 19th century. You don't seem to know much about that. Period. Here's the category. You did what with that candlestick? And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. And I'm not just talking about any candlestick, I'm talking about a very small candlestick. Attention all Clue fans. Colonel Mustard said he was in four rooms the night of the murder. Which one is he lying? Oh, looks like you scratched on this one. Now the correct answer is, there's no solarium in the Clue Mansion. All right, come on. Uh-oh, West Truck licks nine more. It's time for a Snickerfish Restaurant. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. How to smoke a cigar. Opening value on this gibberish question, 5,000 bucks. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Ready? With what song lyric does this rhyme? Dunlop, off gold, stogie. Here's one thing we know. He's not young. He's not young, and he's on the bottom. Hmm, what's the opposite of the bottom? Last tent, it isn't about cigars, but smoke is involved. Come on, this question is about to crash and burn. You know, I understand if you don't get a lot of gibberish questions right, because some of these are pretty challenging. On the other hand, you don't have any excuse for this one. On top of Old Smokey, which is also the name of an interesting movie I saw in Times Square. Okay, big... Wow! Right, wait, elevate, hibernate, vegetate... Next up, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. Which osis indicates that chromosomes are becoming more than just friends? Osmosis, my own... Thrombosis, it's a blood clot within an intact blood vessel. Is that your image of romance? And here's the right answer. Meiosis, it underlies all forms of sexual reproduction. Hey baby, what do you say? Meiosis or yours? How about it? Hit me. Ooh, oh, what's your sign? It's number nine. The name of this category is Puppet Revolution. And we are talking 1,000 bucks for this question. Okay, imagine this. Grover and Big Bird decide they've had enough of working for PBS. They form their own church, Arm Up at a Perpetual Felt, which in turn takes over the government of Sesame Street. Tell me. Some might call it a puppet government. But since it's a government based on religion, it's a theocracy. Okay. The category behind this question is, I'm not talking about the linen. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. Complete this song lyric. Louie, Louie, whoa. We got a blow, we got a bone, we gotta go. Okay, see ya. Should have picked this. <laughs> According to the published song lyrics, those are the next words. And I should point out that we are not responsible for what a college cover band does to it. Okay, we're at the end of round one, now on to round two. <laughs> now pay attention, because all the questions in round two are worth more money. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, come on. Love it! Love it! Love it! 
the category. No wonder he wears a mask. It's going to be worth $4,000. Native American Tonto used to refer to his partner affectionately as Kimosabi. The name Kimosabi was supposed to mean faithful friend, but in the Navajo tongue, it actually means what? White shirt, wet lizard, soggy shrub, or dances with... How soggy shrub? Now, what I want to know is why Tonto calls a Lone Ranger a wet bush. How about... Well, 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 let's delve into question 12. All right, let's see what we're doing here. You'll put an eye out. A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. Hang on tight, because here we go. If you combine the Buckeye State with the Hawkeye State, what state would most likely result? Idaho, Ohio, Idaho, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, or Ohio? Ohio. And you know, if you think about it, it's not a bad idea either. I mean, do we really need both of those states? Okay, pick it. This one's going to be Accidental Candy Developments of the Renaissance. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. All right, imagine watching this commercial from the 16th century. Thou hast forcefully consummated mine chocolate with the nectar of mine peanuts. Nay! Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And remember, thou hast no wrong way to consume said peanut butter cup. All right, come on here. Uh-oh, Test Nut Slick Crime Store. Once again, it's time for a... Flitter Piss No Scope. The category for this gibberish question, things that make you sweat. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10000 bucks. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. Okay, now put your fingers on your buzzers and tell me, what does this rhyme with? It's not, duh. Eat pits the stupidity. At number one, people say this when it's hot out. At number two, it's when it's hot and the air is wet. Go for it. Type in your hand. I can definitely tell it's human because you got the frizzies on that question. And no, I don't know what that means either. I'm just reading off my teleprompter here, folks. How about... Evergreen, self-esteem, beauty queen, rapture spleen. Here's question 15. Next up, veracity in velocity. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Which of these is the fastest? A gentle breeze on the Beaufort scale, the average speed of the winner of the first U.S. auto race, the maximum speed of a chicken, or the maximum speed at a roaring 7.5 miles per hour. He wasn't exactly flying. In case you're curious about the correct answer, the maximum speed of an elephant. Okay. Flush your head down the latrine. Easy away with sour cream. The category is sucking up the electromagnetic spectrum. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4000 bucks. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Of the following, which would most likely be the favorite vacuum cleaner brand of Roy G. Biv? Hoover, Bissell, Rainbow, or Royal? You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. Roy G. Biv is a way to remember all the colors of the rainbow. Remember, kiddies? All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Jiggy Jack is gone. Let me hear you scream. It's question 17. Here's the category. Verge Schmerge. This question's going to be worth $2,001 bills. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. If you are kibitzing on a kibbutz, what are you doing? Being an expert on dairy products, giving advice on a commune. Now, what would it be called if you ate kibbles and bits while you kibitzed on a kibbutz? How about it? Hit me with a category. Eighteen. Wipe the clean. Number eighteen. 
The name in this category is Disco Down with the Brothers Doppler. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Now imagine if your science teacher knew the Bee Gees personally and used them in demonstrations to your class. According to the Doppler effect, if they were moving toward you, their voices would get higher in pitch, bassier in timbre, lower in pitch, or arpeggio. Even if this were true, I don't think the Bee Gees could pull it off. Too bad you didn't pick this. They'd sound higher in pitch. Yeah, with the Bee Gees, you wouldn't think that's possible, but it is. Okay. He's me! Oh. He's me! That's the 19! The category. Someone got a record contract for that, and this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. If your name were Rich, which word would not be a part of your Banana Fana name game song? Rich, Fitch, Kitch, or Mitch? Nope, there ain't no kitch. Rich, rich, bo bitch, banana, banana, bo bitch, me, my, mo, bitch, rich. All right, come on, hit me. We need. Wow, honey, it's question number twenty. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Living in sin throughout history. I'll pay you four thousand dollar bills for this one if you get it right. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Living in sin became acceptable in the 70s, but which couple shacked up together over 2,000 years ago? Romeo and Juliet, William and Mary, Julius... Those nutty kids, Caesar and Cleopatra. Yeah, they lived together in a big condo in Rome till he died from a mysterious stabbing pain in his chest. Jack up, you already know what you're doing. Well, make sure your match fits this clue. That's no lady, that's my wife. That's your only hint. You're on your own for the rest. Good luck. Good. Of course, five minutes later, he told me I had my head up my butt. So don't get cocky, cuz... You don't know Jack. Excellent show, everybody. Hey, um, Cookie, uh, what are we gonna do with these contestants? Uh, listen, excuse me, uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just gotta let me know, alright? Breakfast cereal icon... Can I, uh, can I get something to eat, Helen? Helen. Uh, it's a little healthy. <clears throat> All right, sorry. Hey there. Good morning. Welcome to our show. Uh, could you tell me how many contest? We're playing solo. All right then. Let's have a name. Who on her groin? Uh, one other thing. Are you looking for a full 21 question game? Cool. Schmitty. Schmitty. Thirty seconds. Right, say together. That means your buzzer is the letter B, as in side of beef. On three. One, no time two, means no time. Three. Do I have Schmitty. to draw a diagram? Schmitty. 20 seconds. Put them there. All right, pay attention. People screw this up all the time. As soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. You got that? Ten seconds. Okay, look alive. Here we go. Lose the desktop. Okay, and go to black. 
and that's Four. confidence you and can count on. Stand by. New Cloaca, because there's a reason they named it after a sewer. show where high culture and pop culture collide. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Ah, the game of solitaire. I got you. Hey, I'm here alone too. So let's get it. All right, go ahead and pick one. Ooh, baby. All right, next up, musicals with a message. Two thousand bucks for right answer. Okay, take a close look at this picture. What would be the best name for a Buddhist musical featuring this character? Phantom of the Mosque, Cats, Hello Dalai Lama, or... Well, Hello Dalai Lama. It's so nice to have you back in that sarong. Take your pick, what do you say? Category, let's do it. Potato chips and the origin of the universe. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. The phrase, once you pop, you can't stop, is not only the slogan for Pringles potato chips, it's also a pretty good description of the Big Bang Theory and the expansion of the universe. To make the slogan, once you pop, you can't stop, more accurately reflect the Big Bang Theory, what phrase would scientists have to add? Until celestial motion freezes, unless... No, that's what the folks at Pringle should add to the end of the slogan. Here's what you should have picked. Eventually, gravity forces may overcome the forces of inertia from the Big Bang. The Big Bang Theory says the universe started off as a single blob with infinite density. Just what you'll be if you sit on the couch eating all day. Come on, we need a category. Put on your pants for the naked dance. Three. The category is Moans and Bones. Get this right, get $2,000. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. If grandma wanted to improve her bone strength by increasing the amount of vitamin D in her system, which of the following is the best way to increase her vitamin D? Human skin converts the ultraviolet rays of the sun into vitamin D. <laughs> Seeing Grandma naked converts the nudist colony into a lost colony. Hey, get back here! Where did everybody go? How about it? We need a category. Shake it up the floor! Shake it up the floor! And this question's category is... TV families, you wish were yours. And this one's worth $2,000. Okay, help me out here. And when you know the answer, buzz in and type the answer. I'm trying to remember. Well, what's the name of that TV show? You know, it started the gun. Take it away. Type in your answer. In if you want backstabbing, money grabbing, and Joan Collins, you gotta go with Dynasty. <laughs> Wow, I bet Heather Locklear is so glad she moved on to better shows. Okay, pick a category. An outstanding selection, because under that category is one major league point-racking question, the Dis or Dad. And the category for this Dis or Dad question is... I never learnt that in high school. Alright, listen up. I'm gonna read off seven names to you, and for each one, I want you to tell... Oh, alright, you already know how to play. Well, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. Here we go. Maria, computer language, you're head of the class. Fortran. Cobalt. Algol. Juarello. Last one! Come on. All seven! Perfect! And with time to spare, here you go. There's a little sugar for you. Let's move on. Come on, 
on, we need a category. Oh, this is really big. Sex. This thing is huge. Sex. The category. Wake me up before you go go. Two G's for a right answer. All right, here we go. If the Egyptian Secretary General of the United Nations goes bye bye to American Samoa, then what is true? Butros Butros Gali is in Pago Pago. Shing Shing is in Bora Bora. Duran Duran. Butros Butros Gali is in Pago Pago. <laughs> and he's lying around in a moo moo eating couscous. Take your pick. What do you say? The category is full and bursting in Beverly Hills. Two thousand bucks riding on this one. On a visit to the Beverly Hillbillies mansion for a party. You have a few too many and you really need to go. In a drunken stupor, you swear that you hear Jed tell you to use the vitrine. On what have you most liked? A vitrine is a glass case used for displaying objet d'art. <laughs> Will she be upset when you do this? Well, Ellie may, or she may not. Alright, go ahead. Order me the taco plate with a side of question eight. And we call this one, Shut Up or We're Turning This Museum Around. And this one's gonna be worth $1,000. Okay, hang tight, put your fingers on your buzzers, here's the question. You're taking a road trip with some famous statues, and as usual, they've started bitching. What is the most likely complaint of the statue winged victory? Discus throwers hitting my leg stomp. David, crack a window for crying out loud. I'm getting cheese doodles on my fingers. Or no fair playing road bingo. I winged victory has no head, so she can't see to play road bingo. <laughs> And in case you're wondering, she's been doing all that whining by holding up little pre-lettered signs. How about... It's party time. Here comes number nine. Category. Candy striping in heaven. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. All right, fingers limbered, cause here comes the question. All right, little angel, it's your turn to pass out refreshments in heaven's dead artist swing. Based on his paintings, which candy would George Surratt prefer? Snow caps, dots, Hershey's... Surratt invented pointillism, a technique of painting with very small strokes or dots. He also had a lot of trouble talking with those things. Come on, we need... This category is, it's for medicinal purposes. Okay, the right answer nets you 1,000 bucks. Check this out. Imagine an episode of Handicap in which that lovable drunk comes down with malaria. Luckily, he can treat the disease without cutting back on the alcohol. Which drink should he choose? Arr, no matey, but that'll do ye for scurvy. Now, the correct answer is... Tonic water contains quinine, which is used to treat malaria. Now, if only he could convince Flory that Guinness cures the common cold. Halfway there, ten more questions. Okay. It's 11 minus 1 plus 2 minus 1. It's 11. This one's gonna be... Is that a pointy bra or are you just happy to see me? Pop a right answer, you got 4K. Okay, it looks like it's time for another trip out back to the dumpster to rummage through some celebrity trash. Let's see here. I found a mesh tank top, a mini skirt, an empty container of hydrogen peroxide, and a crucifix necklace. Whose trash is this? Madonna from her Vulcan. You must be a lucky star. <laughs> Ah, remember the good old days when all Madonna showed you was her belly button? Take your Twelve. And this category is Mad Scientist and Community Service. And this one's worth $4,000. Get your fingers ready. Here's one coming at you. You're down at the morgue trying to build the perfect 4-H club member. According to the 4-H motto, if you've already got the head, hands, and heart, what else do you need to do? The final H is health, so you need to reanimate the corpse. <laughs> then just make sure its agriculture project does not involve fire. <laughs> How 
about it, we need a category. I love 13, number 13, uh -huh. Okay, coming up, this category is, I wonder if you can recycle that. 4,000 bucks behind this one. Hey, it's time to go through a little celebrity trash I got from a very interesting street. Now, this question's a fill in the blank, so when you know the answer, buzz in and then type your answer. Okay, I see a crumbled up letter to a guy named... Okay. You weren't listening, were you? I said, what street am I on? Let me take a second of my time to show you what's right. That furry matted green thing with the human arm inside it is, of course, Oscar the Grouch from Sesame Street. It's amazing some of the garbage you find on public television. Alright. Category, let's do it. One plus one equals clean. Six thousand dollars could be yours. Hang on tight, cause here we go. If Procter & Gamble introduced a line of laundry detergents named for mathematical terms, which of the following could be sold as... That's right! <laughs> an axiom is an unproved mathematical statement, widely accepted as being true. The bleach part gives you whiter whites. Next up, on the highway to hell, we are talking four big ones. Okay, you're speeding your way through Europe, and you hit someone with your car. You don't have time to stop and look, though, and you keep going. You notice that as you go through Italy, people point and yell, Babo better be on the lookout for pissed off elves. You just pulled a hit and run job on Santa. You are definitely going to be put on the naughty list for that. And this question's category is another unnecessary installment. This one's worth six grand. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Suppose they made a sequel to Dracula called Furcula. Based on the name of this new vampire, what would be the most likely form for our monster to take? Wishbone. We have captured the dreaded Furcula. Now, Mr. Harker, make a wish. The category is, how low can Placido go? 2,000 bucks for right answer. I don't know, maybe you've heard of playing tonsil hockey. Well, if the different levels of the human singing voice were to play vocal limbo, which one could go the lowest? Baritone, soprano, the bass. In voice limbo, they're the winners. In real limbo, they're the guys who still touch the bar when they're lying flat on the ground. Okay, pick it. Uh oh, press what's with mime door. It's time for letter kiss no strong. All right, this gibberish category is it takes a licking. Opening value for this gibberish: ten grand. Now you're gonna have about thirty seconds to solve this puzzle, and uh, I'm gonna be taking away a little bit of cash every second and a half. Okay, now tell me with what eighties icon does this rhyme? Do me too. Kiss gland. Amuse. And uh, remember, ignore the punctuation. Okay, let your fingers be. Remember all those big hits they had? Me neither. The category is drinks and divorcees. We got four grand on the table. Okay, Schneider from One Day at a Time asks Ann Romano to meet him for a nightcap. Ann and Schneider slip into a steamy room in the building. He pours whiskey into a shot glass and drops it into a mug of beer. Ann chugs it down. What and where is she drinking? A shandy in the steam room, a boiler maker in the boiler room, a sour pussy in the septic. No, but it looks like Ann's cat took a steamer in her shan box. <laughs> A boiler maker in the boiler room.
Hey, uh, Ms. Romano, now that I've fixed you a drink, uh, how about I check out your pipes? Fresh Saver. 20. The category. Emery and Divery. Get this right, get $2,000. Okay, take a shot at this. If you were to see a beauty parlor with a sign in the window stating ivory sharpening a specialty, which would you not expect to see among the clientele? Walruses, hippopotamus. The horn of the rhinoceros is actually made of the same stuff as hair. They could just go to a barber shop. <laughs> Yeah, how you doing today, Al? Just take a little off the horn and uh, trim up the sideburns, will ya? Come on, we need... Ah, you've been here before. Well, hope you're prepared this time. Here's your clue. Are we there yet? In my opinion, we're not even close. See you on the other side. Competition, though, so I'd like to tell you that you're amazing, but all I can really tell you is You don't know Jack! Okay, excellent show. Please roll the commercials and uh, Cookie, what's happening here? Okay, okay, you got on the high scoreboard, that's fine, but I want to tell you something. If I wanted to, I could demolish your measly little score, but... What is with the starfish gobo? 20 seconds, people. Oh, 20 seconds. Um, okay, look, listen. Here's the directions. When a question pops up, you gotta buzz in. Then you pick your answer on the screen and hit the right number on the keyboard. Got it? It is easy. 10 seconds. Good luck. 9, and 8, get rid of the desktop. 7, hey, 6, let's go to 5. Thank you, okay, cancer. we're rolling. 3. Cancer stick. Putting a softer, more kissable nail in your coffin. <coughs> It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Welcome to Jack. Just you and me tonight, huh? None of your friends want to get together, so why not hang out with the game show host? Really, thanks for thinking of me. So it's just you playing this time around, huh? Nothing to be ashamed of. Just don't let it happen again. Well, let's get started. Shake hands with I care of the tiger. This one can net you a grand. Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. 
Imagine researchers determined that all those hours of staring at MTV in the 1980s had devastating effects on our eyesight. What might their study have been called? Hemorrhoidal hooters? My myopia is nearsightedness. Yeah, myopic men at work, you remember them. They had that big hit in the 80s. Who can I see now? This category is known as history can be so bizarro. Three thousand dollars for this one. Hey, you know how the Super Friends cartoon had a bizarro Superman in the Legion of Doom who is kind of like Superman's evil opposite and did a lot of things backwards? Well, suppose the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro had a bizarro Pizarro. Which Pizarro? No, it was Cortez who conquered the Aztecs, and your guess that conquered your score. In case you're wondering. Since Pizarro discovered and conquered the Inca Empire of Peru, a Bizarro Pizarro would have discovered and conquered Spain. But lucky for Bizarro Spain, later on in the American-Spanish War, they get Cuba and Puerto Rico. All right. One, two, two, three, three. And this one is Outer Space Kids are Sissies. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Hey, remember that TV program, The Big Blue Marble? Suppose the Earth really were a big blue marble and the universe were a big circle. If an extraterrestrial played marbles with the planets, how would it win our big blue marble? Shoot through the universe and not hit Earth? Knock Earth out of the universe with a shooter, shoot out all the planets except Earth, or knock Earth into the sun? Well, you're toast. Should've picked this. To win. In Earth, an alien would have to knock Earth out of the circle without the shooter leaving the circle. And you know how kids are with toys. Sooner or later, the extraterrestrial mom will be complaining about all the planets under the couch. Okay, pick a category. You can't stop at three. No, you gotta have four. Yeah. Okay, give it up for Volget while the getting's good. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. Pick the best Latin punchline for this childhood joke. What happens when you throw a clock out the window? Tempest Fugit, Mia Culpa, Semper Fidelis. When you throw a clock through the window, time flies, or Tempest Fugit. Those Latin dudes sure knew, too. With a good enough throw, those sundials would just go forever. Okay. Let's blow this time and head for number five. May I introduce God Shave the Queen? And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. You know, nicknames can really hurt. When I was a kid, people used to call me Shortbread. Well, suppose the Queen Elizabeth I was none too happy with her nickname. What would have been the best way for England's Queen Elizabeth I to lose her nickname? A good romp in the sack with the members of Queen could make people stop calling Queen Elizabeth I the Virgin Queen. <laughs> But that could pose a sexual preference issue. I heard she doesn't really go for 70s glam rockers. All right, hit me. Six. This little number's known as Longfellow's Meter. This one's worth a grand. Just step up and take a swing at this one. If poet Ezra Pound had become a spokesman for the metric system, what might he have had you call him? Ezra S converted to the metric system, Ezra Pound would be approximately half a kilogram. <laughs> but either way, he's still pretty heavy. I need a K. Say hello to new swear words. You get this one right and it's $3,000. Put your tray in the upright position. It's time for takeoff. If Christianity were taken over by the church of the subgenius, which of these expressions would most likely become tan? The symbol for the church of the subgenius is a guy named J.R. Bob Dobbs. <laughs> Yeah, and the worst thing you can tell someone in the church is that you hope they become normal. Okay, pick You chose wisely, my friend. You just got your hands on a dis or dat. And this
this this or that questions category is Kung Fu Guy. Okay, I'm going to list off seven things. You have to tell me if it's a type of mushroom or one of the martial arts. If it's a mushroom, uh, oh, so you already know how to play. Okay, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's do it. Shiitake mushroom. Maitake. Aikido. Wushu. Inoki. Aikido. One more. Matsutake. That's all she... a couple, but I've seen worse. Let's check out your total. Time to put some food on the table. Let's keep going. Category, please. Aloha, question number nine. Coming at you, Hudson Hawk was a masterpiece. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. I don't know, I thought that Bruce Willis movie had some potential. Consider this. If the cinematography of the thrilling comic masterpiece Hudson Hawk were influenced by the Hudson River School of Art, which significant scene would be included? Frank Stallone floating on water lilies? New day. Frank Stallone on water lilies? Uh, let me take some of your Monet. Let's take a look at the right answer. In the early 1800s, the Hudson River School of Art captured the magnificence of this country called America in their beautiful landscape paintings. Danny Aiello sitting on a remote hillside. Woo boy, I'm laughing already. Okay, I need a category. Okay, make yourself presentable, because you're about to join a three-way. Alrighty, here's the deal. You're oh, alrighty, no foreplay it is. Let me guess, you're not the slow romantic kind of lover. Well, you asked for it, here it is. The category for this little number is, you're an animal. And that means you're being joined by this bunch of animals. Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. Here we go. And for goodness sake, be careful. Oh yes! Okay, that's all she wrote. Hmm, I wonder how you did. A little sloppy, but I still love you. Let's see what this earnest attempt did to your overall score. Yes, it's time to move on now, but I'll never forget our special experience together. Uh, whatever your name is. Okay, either you finished round one, or you have another round to go. You know, depending on how you look at these things. Every question in round two is... Well, what do we have here? Dirty underwear versus sexual reproduction. One right answer and $6,000 head your way. Think fast. Choose the now debunked scientific theory that this equation supports. Sweaty underclothes plus wheat equals mice. Spontaneous generation bio. Now, the principle of biogenesis says that life only comes from life. And low scores come from wrong answers. <laughs> See, now, I could have given you some cash if you pick this. In centuries gone by, it was common belief that living things spontaneously generated themselves from non-living things. One Belgian doctor thought that mice could be generated from sweaty clothes and wheat. This theory really cut into the romance of meeting in the barn for a little roll in the straw. Nick, a mouse! I need a category. I'm getting a reading of 12. Over. 
This one's called, Tell Me, Have You Seen Her? Hello, we're talking six grand, so pay attention. Hey, did you know those cards that are used to test people's ESP abilities are called Zener cards? Well, if you were to play poker with a deck of Zener cards, you could wind up with any of these hands except which? A pair of X's, two pair of stars and circles, three of a kind, all plus signs. All plus signs? No. And I'm seeing all minus signs for you. <laughs> Excuse me, but... There are no cards marked with an X in a deck of Zener cards, and there aren't any cards in my poker deck marked with an X either, as far as anybody knows. Okay, pick a category. This one likes to go by. Thanks for ruining the movie for me. Get a right answer. You're walking away with four grand. All right, imagine this one. You're in a movie theater watching the 1980 biopic about John Merrick. If Mr. Merrick suddenly comes in and takes the seat in front of you, what might you think? The movie you're watching is The Elephant Man, the story of John Merrick, a Victorian circus freak with a huge bulbous-shaped noggin. Well, you might not be able to see the movie, but you could laugh really loud during all the sad parts. Category, please. Here we have a bat walks into a bar. How does $2,000 sound? Oh no, the Riddler has decided to take a new approach to thwarting Batman. If instead of normal riddles, the Riddler were to confuse Batman with the Buddhist riddles known as koans, what would you... A koan is a non-rational statement or riddle used for meditation in Zen Buddhism. Here's the sound of one bat wing flapping. Okay, I need a category. Not 14, not 16, you're right in between. Pucker up for. I hear they're putting in an escalator. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Flex those fingers, cause here it comes. Which of the following describes in order the musical happenings in the Led Zeppelin song, Stairway to Heaven? Start softly, gets louder, and... The 7 minute 55 second song begins with a nice soft guitar, gets louder and more intense throughout, and ends with a nice soft vocal. Hmm, it starts soft and lasts less than eight minutes. No wonder I relate to that song so well. I need a category. Uh-oh, blah, 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 blah. It's time for a crash crash Take a look at your gibberish category. Did Russian czars get much tail? And 10,000 bucks right out of the gate for this one. Now check it out, as the time disappears, so does the money, so the sooner you buzz in, the better. Ready to buzz in and type? Then tell me what commercial phrase this rhymes with. Sleaze won't tease a czar twin. First clue, it's from an ad that began in the 60s. Talk to me, type in... Since he devoted his life to the protection of toilet paper, I guess that makes Mr. Whipple a textbook example of anal retention. All right, hit me. On the big bayou in Louisiana, quest on 17. Now serving, homicide can be a barrel of laughs. $2,000 says you don't know this one. Put it in gear, because here we go. Which of the following lists contains in order a weapon, a color, and a clown? Harpoon, maroon, buffoon, loon, doubloon, Cameroon, boon... Feels good, don't it? <laughs> Harpoon, maroon, buffoon. Good to know next time you stage a murder spree at the circus. Okay. And I believe this one's called The Rise and Fall of Small Ugly Creatures. Set up straight, this one's worth $6,000. Hey, remember David Bowie's alter ego Ziggy Stardust and his backup band The Spiders from Mars? Well, imagine Ziggy is planning a comeback but can't get The Spiders from Mars back together. If he wants another spidery band, which of these should he not choose? Tarantulas from Beyond Space, The Velvet Daddy Long Legs. 
No, brown recluses are spiders, but they're not real joiners. For the curious, here's the right answer. Daddy long legs are not actually spiders, although they're closely related. It's just as well, the dim lighting on stage is just a recipe for disaster. Guitar solo stig! Oops, I've stepped on stig. Category, please. Let's see what we got going. The original pet detective. You get 4,000 clams for this one. Hey, it's time to go dumpster diving. I'll describe the stuff we find, and you buzz in and start typing when you can tell me whose dumpster we're rooting through, okay? Now, let's see. Wow. There's a whole car with a gong and some gadgets in it. Janitor's keys, a number one super guy coffee mug, love letters addressed to Penrod Pooch from Rosemary, and a kung fu book. Whose trash is this? Make your mo He's a dog with a pet cat and the voice of Scatman Crothers. He's our number one super guy, Hong Kong Fooey. And I know it was just a cartoon, but was I the only one who noticed that it's a dog hanging out and talking with humans? And that it was the cat who solved all the crimes? Huh? Okay, pick a category. Well, looks like this category is, you'll laugh, you'll cry. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Heads up, here it comes. Let's say you're watching a performance of Swan Lake when suddenly one of the swan dancers breaks into a swan song. The expression swan song means a farewell because according to legend, swans are supposed to sing when they die. She's probably dying from hunger. You ever seen them? Ballerinas so thin and they smoke so much too. What a shame. All right, hit me. aren't we? Relax and take a look at this clue. I'll tell you when to panic. There's a moon out tonight. Hope it's not a bad moon rising. Good luck. guest we had this whole game. Really? Now do me a favor. Take a quick look to your left, now your right, and repeat after me. You don't know Jack! That's a wrap, folks. Give yourselves a little pat on the back. And Raul, are we doing another one of these? Hey, if you want to play again, just give me the high sign, okay?
welcome to the ride. As they say, all's fair in love and war. So guess what? I'm sending you to the war floor. Now. How many people will be playing? You're alone, by yourself. That's great. Thank you. Is this your first time? Splendid. Glad you had the courage to play again. I need you to type in your name now. Very good. I need to remind you that your buzzer is the letter B. It's time for you to go off to war now, but don't worry. I'll wait for you under the apple tree. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack is brought to you by Armageddon Bible and Gun. Shop Arming God Soldiers for a new self-righteous millennium. All this month, get a free prayer towel with every automatic weapon purchase of $5,000 or more. And now, please welcome your host, Cookie. Hey there, lover. Listen, I have a bit of a headache, so we're just going to make war instead. All right, look sharp. I'm sending you to the front line. Okay, nice shot. Here's your category. War. It's got a beat and you can kill to it. So, do you like Motown music? Well, whether you do or not, I need to ask you something, okay? And, uh, this is kind of important to me. War. Huh. Good God. In the song War, Motown artist Edwin Starr reminds us that war just isn't of much value. Well, unless it becomes your only top 40 hit, you know, then, then it does have some value. Hey, Oh, that was sucky. I'm sorry about that. Here's your category. Thou shalt not war unless you think I told you to. All right, you probably know the Middle East has seen more than its share of war. That's why it's called the Shot Full of Holy Land. How long did Israel's 1967 war with Egypt, Syria, and Jordan last? As long as... God created everything in six days, and the Israelis and Arabs fought the Six-Day War in 1967. And on the seventh day, you know, there was just a lot of terrorism. All right, babe. Okay, give it up for... Art is hell. Guess the magic number here is 3565. Could be your lucky number. Let's find out. If Sun Tzu's The Art of War treatise included actual artwork, which of these would be the best ex... Supreme excellence in the art of war is subduing the enemy without fighting. So if the big-eyed kids went over the enemy with their charm, they're practicing supreme excellence. You know, instead of the usual supreme bad taste. Hey, can't be too disappointed with that. Here's your category. Memorize your line, soldier! Let's see that question. How can an actor returning from service in World War A term used to describe a specific region of fighting in a war is theater. And it has nothing to do with that guy in the foxhole who always liked to wear tights. He was just weird. Alright. Oh, nice pickin'. Well, wouldn't you know it, it's time to play Dis or Dad. And this Dis or Dad question's category is... The sexy side of war. Okay, I'm gonna name off seven locations, and for each one you're gonna have to tell me if it's... A Civil War Battleground, nor a steamy primetime TV show. For each right answer, you get some cash. And you're gonna lose some for each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. Okay, you got 30 seconds to nail all seven. Let's do it. Tickets will battle. Dawson's Creek. Baxter. Sheet Mountain Middle Thing of Beauty, let's see your new score. That's what your current score looks like. Let's keep going. It's your buzzer. The category is Gettysburg 90210. 
Well, hold on to your musket balls. Here's another Civil War question for you. Have you needed to mail something to a Getty? It's good. Gettysburg is in Pennsylvania, but don't write to Lincoln. He's, um, dead. Okay, hit your buzzer and try to snip. You do a lot worse than that. Let's check out your category. Bang, bang! Now what? Okay, if you've ever seen Schoolhouse Rock, you know that the start of the American Revolution is known as the shot heard around the world. You might also know that if you've read uh, any book about American history. At any rate, if the American Revolution had begun with Bobby Thompson... When Bobby Thompson hit his shot heard around the world, he secured a 1951 World Series berth for the New York Giants. Which was nothing compared to the 89 series in which the Giants experienced the earthquake scene around the clock on CNN. Okay. Oh, God. Here's your category. An anti-war demonstration. Okay, play ball. Which of the following would constitute a police action? Andy Gibb joining the World War II USO show, Andy Partridge entertaining Civil War heroes, and... Andy Summers played guitar for the police, and the Korean War was actually a, quote, police action. It's roadkill time. Alrighty, remember to buzz in on the item that correctly unites the pair on the screen. And don't forget, bonus cash for the bonus puzzle at the end. Can you say Grease Lightning? Just checking. Here we go. Intelligent and Agent 86 Maxwell Blank. What's the intersection between these two? Freak and kind of bug. Score. Boston's Orchestra and Speed Racer's Dad. George Washington's tray and Warren's blank pie. Jazz style and melting together with extreme heat. Snail's home and candy coating on M&M's. Cartoon ant and very small particle. Score. All right, let's nab that bonus. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all brands of soda? Insects? Military adjectives? Major activities? All right, there it is. Let's keep moving. Hit your buzzer to select the value. We're calling this one. Pretty sneaky, Rear Admiral. Hey, remember Battleship? You sank my battleship! <laughs> Woo, yeah, war is... it's just fun. Considering the five original... The Battleship board game has battleships, cruisers, submarines, destroyers, and aircraft carriers. Of course, no one will ever sink anything of yours if you use the invisible moving around boats that I used to. Okay. Your category is... A kinder, gentler trained killer. Get your buzzer finger ready, here we go. Considering the purpose the Marine Corps... The turtle is a stupid idea for a mascot. But since the Marine Corps is amphibious like the turtle, okay. So with a turtle mascot, the Marines would be saying to the world, Hello, we're slow plotting and stupid. 
Hit your buzzer to choose the value of the next question. This one's called... OU812? Okay, imagine World War III breaks out. Come on, it'll be fun. If a PFC in the USMC reports a snafu to an enemy, the Marines could put out an APB or All Points Bulletin to find the missing PFC. I mean, you can't really blame the guy for deserting. He probably got tired of marching around in that turtle costume. Now select the highest value and see if you hit the jack. For me to shoot a clue in your direction, here it comes. Some gun assembly required. I don't like those do-it-yourself gun kits. You know, I just think it's easier to buy one from the crack dealer down the street. Such a blast, cause I'm going on a fast with you. It'll be so great as we ignore our dinner plate of food. Get those fools that let the stomachs expand. If I wasn't so weak, I would take your hand in mine. It'll be so great losing half my body weight with you. It'll be so fun as my bony skeleton shows through. You're the girl of my dreams cause you never eat. Someday they'll carry us to the justice of the peace. Deprivation.
Bob. Hi, hello, welcome. So, what are you here for? A little network action or are you staying home tonight? Fine, fine. How many people are playing? Well then, tell me, what's your... Great, that takes care of that. Instructions. Yes or no? Fine, okay, you will remain instructionless for now. Enjoy that game. where high culture and pop culture collide. Yep, it's our college episode, Rah Rah, an entire episode devoted to trying to bring back memories from a time in which you destroyed the part of your brain that retains memories. Ah, college. Yep, this is it. You don't know Jack. I'm glad to see you had nothing more productive to do than sit and play a computer game by yourself. Well, to each their own, I guess. All right, let's do it. Okay, hit your buzzer to get a value for the next question. The value for this one is 2750. Here we have. He's no rocket science major. Heads up, here it comes. You're not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Because it actually exists, which of these colleges could you attend? Unsharpened Community College, Rusted Ginsburg. It slices, dices, and can even cut a penny in half, but it's still a wrong answer. Why didn't you pick this one? Welcome to Lame Deer, Montana, home of Off Ramp 73 and Dull Knife Memorial College. Yes, you heard me, Dull Knife Memorial College, where instead of yelling, stick it to them, the cheerleaders proudly chant, jab at them long enough to cause painful bruising. Pick any amount. Okay then, what do you think about this? 2750, you feel like smashing a couple of bugs? Welcome to Bug Out. Try and remember, buzz in when you see a bug that does not belong to the set. And you'll be working up to a final round value of 2750. Okay, get those number two pencils out of your ears and onto your desks where they belong. Here we go. College degrees. Buzz in when you see one that's not a college degree. Oh, oh. <laughs> from the Big Ten. Try not sucking so much next time. 
get a value. Let's see the amount on this one. $3,000. This category is, I got my MB in comedy. Okay, I've got a little Hollywood math for you, all right? Take a look at this equation and buzz in when you know the answer. Marlon Brando plus Matthew Broderick plus blank equals the freshman. Would that be giant lizard, invisible genie, breakdancing robot, or talking monkey? Lame. Take a look at this. Brando, Roderick, and a big lizard were the three characters at the center of the film called The Freshman. Sure, all the lizard did was catch flies with its tongue, but that was still the best part of the movie. Or was that Brando? Time to choose a value. The price on this question is five grand. Get yourself ready for... Now, wait a minute. Zsa, Zsa, Zsa. Well, hey, look at this. Guess who just happened to stop by? It's Frat Guy. Hey, Frat Guy, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> Been out drinking, huh? Yeah, college. Okay, yeah. Hey, why don't you see if you can read this question for us and maybe, you know, go home and take a shower or something. No problem, bro. Uh, okay, bro. If Jaja Gabor was caught with a... Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Whoa, uh, why is the room spinning? Whoa. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on. Uh, all right. All right, is it because his bladder is... The room spins when you're drunk due Ooh, to reduced drunk. activity. Easy, easy. Reduced activity in the central nervous system. Hey, rat guy, is that Pamela Anderson behind you? Where? I, no, behind you. I don't over your other shoulder. I don't know, over there? No, no, no turn, keep turning. Behind your other back. Oh, I love drunk people. Where'd she go? Buzz in for your amount. Let's see what the total amount on this one is. 2,500. We're calling this one. Look at me, look at me. Hey, you know that famous Brady Bunch episode where Jan gets upset because Marsha gets all the attention? You know, it's the one where she utters her famous line, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Well, if students at Harvard University get upset because the students at Harvard's sister school get all the attention, what might they whine? Radcliffe, 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 Barnard, 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 Smith, Smith, Smith. Harvard's foxy sister school is Radcliffe. And just like in the Brady Bunch episode, the students at Harvard went to drastic measures to establish their own identity. Now they all wear black curly wigs. Value time. Here's your total value for this one. 4,500. Let's have a big warm welcome for It Only Happens Once in a Blue Jeans. And now, your question. If I want to drive by a girl's dorm and blue moon them, what will I have to do? Give them a full moon on Friday the 13th. Give them half moons on consecutive nights. Give them two full moons in the same month. Or give them a full moon in the daytime. You big dummy. The correct answer is... A blue moon occurs when you get two full moons in the same month. The second one is the blue moon. You can tell it's me mooning you by the big craters on my ass. Some people believe that millions of years ago, there was water there. Buzz in for the value. And this one's going to be worth 2,250 smackers. Open wide and get ready for this just in. Getting stoned is bad for you. See if you can wrap your skull around this. Since it's a legal form of punishment there, in which of these countries might college students literally get stoned? Morocco, Iran... Well, what do you know? In Iran, stoning is prescribed as punishment for adultery and other sexual offenses. Of course, if we tried that here in the U.S., half the government would be beaten to death with rocks. Take a value. All right, keep an eye on that value, my friend. Prepare yourself for the steely gaze of a dissertat. 
And this This or That Questions category is washing your mouth out with an eraser. Yes, now I'm going to read off seven different things. And for each one, perhaps you well, someone's done this before. Here's your 30 seconds. And we're off. SAT. SOB. GRE. ACT. SOL. BFD. And GE. Back to the ones you skip. Last one. That's it. So you got five right. How does it feel to be just about average? Let's see your new score. Well, there you have it, I guess. Grab a value. This one comes in at around 4,500. Allow me to introduce. It's the Greek that screws them up. Okay, I got a question here that... Yeah. Hey, Schmitty. Oh, hey, it's Frat Guy again. Just wanted to let you know we're getting ready to go on a panty raid. Can I pick you up something? Uh, yeah, sure. Give me a G-string or something. All right, dude. Ah, <sighs> those lovable sexual harassers, huh? You gotta love them. Hey, tell me something, will you? If Frat Guy raids the Phi Beta Kappa house, what kind of panties will he get away with? Freshmen's panties, engineering majors' panties, smart people's panties, or football play... Phi Beta Kappa is the honorary fraternity for college juniors and seniors who have achieved scholastic excellence. Please use extreme caution when stealing Phi Beta Kappa panties. You'll want to check for nerd turds. Don't ask, just keep an eye out for anything unusual. Pick an amount! Well, I'll be gosh darn. 2,250 smackers. Well, look what I found. When your tongue sticks to your textbook. Let's see how you handle this one. Suppose you attend a university in Barrow, Alaska. If you pull an all-nighter beginning on November 18th, how long will your all-nighter last? About four to five days, about two months, about six months, or about... Survey says... <laughs> Uh, does this ring a bell? In Barrow, Alaska, the sun doesn't rise between roughly November 18th and January 24th each year. It's really not as bad as it sounds. You know how the old saying goes, time flies when you're studying the history of the irrigation system of ancient Mesopotamia. Time to pick a value. Well, damn, this makes for a nice little prize. 10,000 bucks. What in the... I can't read this. It's time for... Just buzz in and start typing when you figured it out. If you move quickly, you can earn more cash. The opening value for this one is 10,000 bucks. All right, let's see if you can unscramble this phrase. And don't freak out about the punctuation. Just focus on the letters. Lee, Al Gore, collect... See if this helps. It's a group of people. Members of this group are appointed by each state's legislature. You see, they're the ones whose votes really count when it comes to electing the president. Come on, start typing and hit return. And considering the outcome of some recent elections, apparently it's the only college you don't have to be smart to get into. Go ahead and choose a value. The total value for this one is 2,250 smackers. This one's called Found in Some Brew with the Bros. Okay, let's go. If you're at a party and your friends yell chug for every gill that's in a pint, what chant will you hear? Chant one. Chug, chug. Chant two. Chug, chug, chug. Chant three. Chug, 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 chug. Or chant four. Chug, 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 chug. Wow, nobody ever picks that one.
Here's a good answer. There are four gills in a pint, so you'll hear the lovely melodious chant of chug, 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 chug. You see that? College can actually help you learn all about science and measurements. For instance, I learned that the trunk of a Corolla is a very small place to be locked up for an evening with a case of beer and a rabbit ferret. Go ahead and grab an amount. The reward for this one is seventeen fifty. All right, give it up for. Be careful carrying donuts home past pleasant yaks. Okay, pay close attention. I got a tricky one for you. This sentence could be used as a mnemonic device for remembering what Ivy League schools, U.S. military academies, pack ten schools, or every college in Rhode Island. My smart friends tell me the Ivy League schools are Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Harvard, Penn, Princeton, and Yale. I must say this jelly donut is exquisite. Yes, it's almost shaped like Harvard Square. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ah, it's a yak! Ah! Ah! Check a value. Let's see what this one's worth to you. Seventeen fifty. I believe this one is called Biblical Figures Who Do Keg Stands. Ready? Good. We're starting. Suppose that upon his return to Earth, Jesus joins a fraternity. Considering his famous words in the first chapter of the Book of Revelation, what will he most likely say? To the Lambda 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 is the Revenge of the Nerds fraternity. Are you calling Jesus a nerd? You're gonna burn in hell for that. Here's the one you didn't pick. I got mine used, but I still know that in the Book of Revelation, Jesus says I am Alpha and Omega. Hey, I'm sorry, but the party's over. All we have left is water and stale chips. Wait just one moment, my fraternity brother, or I shall turn that water into some killer libations and those stale chips into cool ranch Doritos. Whoa! Choose an amount. Okay, prepare yourself. Great things are about to happen. You are about to embark upon the attack. You should already know how this works, so let's get right to it. Here's your clue. If I learned one thing, it was. Hold on. Give me a minute. Well done, my friend. Let's take a look at your final score. There it is. Wow, that was an intense game. That was really thrilling. You were by far the best player we had. Now do me a favor. Look to your left. Now look to your right, and repeat after me. You don't know Jack. Excellent. 
Okay, okay, I be hurrying. Now, hit the high seas and search for the booty. Remember, the more loot you get, the sooner I'll be freed from the eternal hell. So, uh, go! Looks like it's just the two of us. At least we won't have to explain any of our inside jokes to anyone. Okay, take your seats, please. It's time for liftoff. Go ahead and pick one of these. This one's called, For Heaven's Sake, Protect Your Cup. Better wake up, because there's 6,000 bucks at stake here. All right, see if you can tell me who might have placed the following ad. Lost Grail. Can't believe I lost the bloody thing. No pun intended. Last had near Glastonbury. Great sentimental value. Part of a dinner set. Reward for the virtuous finder. So, what do you think? The Holy Grail was supposedly used to collect blood from the wounds of Jesus and brought to England by Joseph of Arimathea. <laughs> you know, you think he'd pack something a little more sensible for the trip. Like a toothbrush? Pick a category. This category is who's your data and you pocket 4,000 bucks if you get this one right. You know, kids in the 90s were the first to really grow up with computers. They're like members of the family, but it's not always pretty. Your motherboard is so fat. Now then, which punchline accurately fits the joke? It's made up. Oh, man. Your motherboard totally got burned. That has got to hurt. Your motherboard is so fat that it contains both the CPU and RAM chips, and it sleeps around. That's right. I'm saying. So, what's it going to be? Hey, stress cut with lime sore. It's time for a... Liver fresh best job. Let's call this one, Give Me Your Poor, Your Sarcastic Ballpark Urinals. The opening value for this question is going to be 10,000 big ones. Okay, now as soon as you figured out what this gibberish phrase rhymes with, buzz in. Because the more time you take, the less cash you get. Okay, buzz in and start typing when you know what this rhymes with. Catch her full of whiz, hey, fun! And please, don't let the punctuation throw you. Your first clue, it's how you become an American. I mean, besides shooting something. Okay, it's how you become an American when you're from another country. And your last clue, it's very natural. You know, you don't need a green card to buzz in. Now's the time to type in your answer and hit... That's why I like you. Most people would have gotten the answer after three clues, leaving me no opportunity to call them a loser. <laughs> oh, come now. It's the American dream of every immigrant to one day achieve catcher full of was a fun. Yes, that is the proud day when immigrants prove for certain that they know more about American history than any American does. How about picking a category? the category ah bologna this one's worth four thousand bucks okay see if you can figure out this analogy my bologna is to first name as bologna italy is to last name first sandwich first university or oscar Are you kidding me? Sliced bread wasn't even invented until, like, I don't know, 1971. Boy, that was the greatest thing, huh? <coughs> For the curious, here's the right answer. A 
according to the jingle, my baloney has a first name, and Bologna, Italy has the first university. Yes, and for years they had a very intense rivalry with the prestigious University of Pastrami on Rye. Time to choose a category. Hey, I know. How about tube steaks smothered in underwear? How does four thousand dollars sound? Okay, so supposedly Adam and Eve covered their privates in fig leaves, right? Well, if Adam and Eve had covered themselves with grape leaves instead, what might Eve have said to Adam about his stuffed grape leaf? That's one hot pickle. The Mediterranean dish of stuffed grape leaves is known as dolmades, singular dolma. Oh, no, it's ridiculous, really. Eve has to compliment Adam every now and again, or he gets his pine nuts all in a bunch. How about picking a category? And I believe this one's called Berlitz for coffee drinkers. This one's worth six thousand dollars. Let's suppose that during your around-the-world trip, disaster strikes. You crash land in an Italian village. Since the only Italian you know was learned at Starbucks, you shout "Venti, Venti!" What will the angry Italian villagers think you're saying? Well, you won't be getting one from me. You're just wrong. That's all. <laughs> you want to see what the smart money says? Venti is Italian for twenty. It's probably got something to do with the number of ounces in Starbucks' largest coffee size. Of course, that's not nearly as embarrassing as discovering that frappuccino means "I shall now touch your daughter's buttocks." Time to select a category. Well, you've made it to the jack attack. Well, all right then. Let's get to it. Try this clue. Just what kind of man are you singing about? I know it's only rock and roll, but I like it. Competition and a really good score. You know, maybe your friends were right when they told me. You don't know, Jack. You don't know.